evening. Welcome to another Peaceful Solution Character Education Teacher Certification Program uh, or class. Uh, please be seated. Welcome to everybody who's joining us here locally and abroad online on Facebook. Um, again, we do uh, encourage everybody if you are watching for the first time, uh, you can uh, go to the little drop down menu, kind of in the upper right hand corner there on the official Peaceful Solution Facebook page and you can see the um, the books that we've covered so far. Right now we're in the of the intermediate series. We're in uh, number five, the responsibility unit, and you can click down and then click that responsibility unit, which they're all teacher's manuals. And of course you can uh, follow along, <coughs> print up a book if you'd like, and uh, we can all be on the, <clears throat> for lack of a better uh, term, uh, same page as we move forward in this lesson here uh, we're talking about time management now we um, uh, left off last class we were in the uh, note note to the teacher there um, on lesson plan uh, four page a Actually, here. Yeah. Um, and we were just talking about some of the things that we're going to be covering I just want to rehearse that real quick, uh, just those those four points there, uh, kind of toward the middle of the page. It says, this lesson will focus on the following issues. This way that keeps it fresh in our mind, the things that we're going to be uh, focusing on as we move into the purposes and objectives of the, um, of the lesson plan. Uh, time management is an important tool in maintaining a responsible character. Uh, point number two, the value of time management in regards to responsibility, the ability to differentiate between wants and needs, uh, the need to organize and prioritize is point three, in order to better manage various tasks and obligations. <clears throat> um, and number four, uh, the benefit of learning how to manage time and to structure days uh, and how this, in turn, also benefits others. And like I was mentioning last class, um, you know, it's, it's essential that the student understands what responsibility means and how it can affect their lives, right? Uh, you know, the benefits that come as a result of them being responsible. But also, we're going to see in this lesson, which is great, um, how it also benefits others as well, okay? Uh, we went through some of the things at the very beginning of this lesson, you know, we're talking about like the, the, uh, the bus driver not showing up on time and, you know, how, I, how that can just kind of throw everyone's day off. If that were the case, everybody's waiting on the bus, expecting for it to, <coughs> you know, come at a scheduled time, doesn't show up, you know, because the bus driver just decided, hey, you know, I like to take a lazy day off and just kick my legs up and relax a little bit. But they also didn't inform anybody that they were going to take a lazy day off and, and you know, sit back and relax and kick their, kick their feet up. And so everybody else who was dependent on that person um, handling their responsibilities, and we're going to learn about effective list, effective, effective, being effective in your time management, um, you know, they by that ripple effect, you know, they experienced or suffered consequences because of someone else's decision. You know, they could have been late for work, could have been late for school, could have missed an appointment that they had set for like one or two months, you know, they could only get in there for, you know, that time. A lot of things can occur as a result of that. <clears throat> All right, so let's turn over to lesson plan four, page C. Lesson plan four, page C. And again, this lesson is entitled TikTok, TikTok, Time Management. And we see at the very top there, the purpose and objective. Students will learn that managing their time effectively is an important part of being responsible. Managing their time effectively. Now, we're going to get into here a little bit. Uh, well, I say a little bit, but, um, uh, you know, we get into kind of what the the definition of time management is as we get into the very beginning of this lesson um, but just want to point out here just to kind of set our mind on on management and what it means because if you remember from the previous lessons we this word management or manage 
has been used many, many times, but in the previous lessons, it was used to describe emotions, you know, your feelings, con you know, managing your anger, uh, ma you know, and so forth. But it transcends also into managing our time. And you see there that definition this is just, you know, a few definitions of the many that could, uh, that describes manage. And it says to handle or direct with a degree of skill. All right. Which means that there's something you have to be taught. And uh, it's a skill that's developed over a period of time through practice. Uh, it also means to treat with care, like, uh, you know, manage your health or manage, you know, uh, your children or, 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 or even your responsibilities. Also to succeed in accomplishing, like, uh, you know, I managed to uh, overcome a bad habit, right, as, as an example. Now, the etymology of that word manage is to handle, to train, or direct a horse. Now, it, it's funny because the, the great majority of those etymologies, uh, managere, I think it comes from the French managere, manager, uh, in the Latin, and it all ties into kind of handling or directing a horse to do what you want it to do, right? And they call, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if they still do today, you know, the, the horse people who deal with the horses, they call them their handlers, right? The handlers. They also call certain people who manage other people and deal with other people, they call them handlers as well. Um, and it also lastly says effect by effort, effect by effort. Well, the amount of effort that we'll put into managing our time will determine, will determine the output. It will determine uh, if we are able to, as we're going to see here, effectively accomplish our task or accomplish our goals. <coughs> This word effective here, from the Merriam-Webster's dictionary here, it says um, effective suggests an acting or a potential for action or use in such a way as to avoid loss or waste of energy in affecting, producing, functioning, and so forth, right? Um, so the key there, is doing it in such a way to avoid loss or waste, right? And you've heard the old statement, wasting time, right? Or we've lost time. And that can be easily done when time isn't effectively managed. Now, when people are young, they don't really think about those things. You know, they feel that they've got all the time in the world. You know, they're going to live forever, right? But that's not really the case. Uh, you know, like I mentioned last class, the one thing that we don't get over again, they say money can be lost, money can be made again. A house can be lost, a house can be built or purchased again. Clothes can be lost, clothes can be made or purchased again. But you can never get that time back. So it's important, especially in our, our pursuit or our goal of, um, not only our goal, but our students' goal of developing a positive character that they use their time effectively and, and are very mindful of what they use their time for, you know, what they're doing with their quote unquote spare time. You know, if they're not in class or they're not doing homework or not taking care of chores or other responsibilities that might be assigned to them and it's kind of their free time or their personal time. Well, it's, it's essential that they, you know, they still take the time to manage those things uh, effectively, you know, like uh, they could get ready for the next day uh, of, of school, right? Get your clothes out, get their things together, make their lunch, do, you know, do whatever they need to do the night before so they're not getting up rushing around, you know, at the last minute trying to get all these things done. And that's part of the things that we're going to be talking about in this lesson here, <clears throat> that managing their time effectively is an important part of being responsible. And then we see here, the materials used are the student's handbook. And then we get into this, <coughs> we get into this, um, <clears throat> this first procedure here, <clears throat> number one, procedure number one, and it says, review the previous lesson. Now, that's what we just got finished covering. Uh, Chris, uh, in, in the two classes before this one, and then I finished up the bullet points on that one, and that's what we've been in for uh, a little bit of time right now, um, but that lesson was entitled, I have a responsibility to myself, okay? So remember, ties into us, and then ties into, uh, we're going to see here how 
when we are responsible and managing our time, how it can be actually a benefit for other people. And then, um, so as a teacher, you know, you would ask your students the following questions, and these are just some of the, you know, kind of the, um, mm, you know, the kind of kind of door opener questions. You know, you might you might think of, you know, ten or fifteen other questions that you might want to ask your students that that jumped out to you, or you might have seen caught their attention in the class. Uh, but these are just kind of like to get get your get your thoughts to going on on questions to ask because you want you don't want them to forget the previous <clears throat> the previous lesson you want them to be easily able to transition from the previous lesson and responsibility for themselves and time management because they too they both go hand in hand you know they they show this lesson here we're covering actually shows a responsibility for themselves when they manage their time effectively so we don't want them to lose sight of that that's why every lesson you begin by reviewing the previous one. And so you can ask a few of these questions. One is um how do we learn to make <coughs> how do we learn to make responsible choices? And the answers might vary, but should include, so this is something as a teacher you kind of want to look out for to make sure that they're they're including these. Why? Because these are the things that were spoken about that were covered in the previous lesson. Now you know, there's nothing wrong if they might kind of think outside the box and, and, and include something else um, as long as they're on topic and in line with the lesson that's being taught. But you also want to make sure that they're drawing off of and remembering things from the lesson because that helps us as teachers to know, OK, they're remembering it. They're getting it, you know, because remember, as we covered at the very, very beginning, if you're not getting this feedback, if you're not seeing the proper responses then you've kind of got to go back and rehearse those lessons again because it's not just it's not a race as you can tell by how long we've been in these books you know uh, it's it's not a race but the the goal is to see to it that they're understanding the material <coughs> and I know I understand we all know everybody's gonna under they're gonna grasp concepts at a different speed depending on their capacity and their ability to learn but for the most part, generally speaking, we want to make sure that they're bringing out these topics that we covered in the lessons. Um, so some of the things can include, uh, we can learn to make responsible choices by listening to and accepting the advice of those in authority, accepting no for an answer, and being careful to what we conform to. All right, so we've got, I put a note there for myself. <clears throat> you know, accepting the advice and um, listening to um, and accepting the advice of those in authority. Uh, to me, I, I put a little note there as, as input. You know, those are things that can actually go into the, into the student's mind, go into our mind. Those are things that go into us to, that flows in. Those are influences, uh, teachings and corrections and so forth. Those are influences that help us to um, gain knowledge right to gain insight to get education or educated on a particular topic but then also you see at the very bottom there and being careful to what we conform to well that's something that is an output that comes forth from us now this is some uh, opportunity that you can kind of pick your your students minds and ask them you know well again just even though we've been over it many many times you know well what what does it mean to conform Right? How can you tell when someone is conforming? And they can bring in the, the basic definitions. It doesn't have to be something, you know, scholarly or anything. Just keeping it simple. The basic definitions of what we've covered in the Peaceful Solution about, you know, changing standards and customs and so forth. Uh, the way you think, feel, not changing standards and customs, but the changing the way you think, feel, and act to fit in with standards and customs, certain standards and customs. <coughs> Again, the purpose as a teacher Remember, that's what we're training for. The teacher is this is your opportunity without saying it for you to get the feedback to see if your students are remembering the information. And even though you might not necessarily have to go all the way back, although there's nothing wrong with you going all the way back and rehearsing the lesson, as teachers, this is why, you know, you'll see when we're teaching, we, re we refer or reference or cross-reference previous lessons um, because it all ties together. Right. So you can quickly kind of give them a short summary of the definition of that and remind them 
you know, in your character unit, you can find this, or in your self-control unit, you can find that, or whatever it might be, it might even be in the same unit. <clears throat> so those are some of the things that can come forth. And of course, like, remember I said, as a teacher, you know, you can, you can ask a few other questions that, that might jump out. You know, you're there with your students, you're seeing how they're grasping things, how they're enjoying things, you know, what they're talking about, uh, what they're doing in the activities and so forth. So you might ask stimulating questions to help them to recall the information that was presented in the previous lesson. All right, so number two there, uh, procedure two, it says inform students that in today's lesson, they will learn about the importance of effectively managing their time. Now remember what we talked about in that definition there, uh, it's and when something or someone is being effective, they're avoiding loss or waste, avoiding loss or waste. So that time's going to go by. So we want to make sure we're using every second effectively. Somebody did some study that not that long ago, and they said that. Um, now, I don't know how true it is, <laughs> you know, so but it was interesting what they said, because uh, people will spend money on studies that you know, you'd wonder why are they spending this money on these studies, you know, like how many toenail clippings does the average person clip in their lifetime, you know, you know, it's like, did I really need to know that? You know, I just wasted three minutes of my time reading that article. I thought it was going to be something interesting, but, um, but they said people on average spend in their lifetime two years holding the door for people, two years right? Not consecutively, right? <laughs> of course, but just that time waiting, you know, holding the door for people. They say people on average in their lifetime spend two years holding the door. Um, that's a quite a long, long time, right? And anyway, the, the, the reason behind that guy saying that he, he was saying, well, I don't hold the door for people. Well, we've learned in the peaceful solution, that's actually an act of kindness, right? Um, so just because you might you might not get a personal benefit out of holding the door for someone, as we're going to learn here, um, or as we have been learning. It doesn't mean that it's wrong, immoral, or that it can't be something that's beneficial to others. Okay, so remember when we're seeing these things, and 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 you know, there's lots of people that present certain information and facts. You know, I always go back and connect it with what I've learned from the peaceful solution, <clears throat> and say, yep. That might be the case, but is there anything wrong with it? Is there anything immoral? Does it benefit myself or does it benefit someone else? Does it benefit the environment? Well, nothing wrong with doing it, right? So we kind of have to look through the lens of character education before we make information or decisions on the, um, uh, on the things we hear. So now it says inform students in uh, procedure two <clears throat> that in today's lesson, they will learn about the importance of effectively managing their time tell students that learning to manage time is another way they can demonstrate responsibility towards themselves and others. And then uh, have students turn to page 63 <clears throat> in their handbooks and read the uh, introduction. Then have students complete the time management self-evaluation on pages 64 through 65. And if, if you're in a class, and of course, it's not always the case uh, depending on the circumstances where you might have a student's manual for everybody, uh, you know, you can just take these and, uh, and um, if you have a student's manual, which you should as a teacher, because you don't want to print out what's in your book, because um, uh, usually the answers are in there. Well, not actually in this one here. But, um, but some of the answers and some of the activities are actually in the book. So uh, from the teacher's manual. So if you don't, make sure you have a student's manual. So you can copy those activities out of the student's manual because they don't have the answers in the actual place. They're in the back, but they're not in the actual place <clears throat> activity. All right, um, and that's found on page 64 to 65. And it says, lastly, discuss the results of the self-evaluation. Emphasize that time management involves discipline and consistency. Discipline and consistency. And we actually covered that. I was just trying to... Oh, it's not, it's not in this. Well, it actually is, but um, I was thinking about that. We covered that combination of words um, when we were in the lesson on self-control as well, right? And, you know, our controlling our thoughts, our feelings, and action, 
to develop and become the best person that we possibly can all also tying into what we're we're talking about here managing time because there's going to be different pulls that come at you know you in one direction and another and like we're going to be talking about you you might have a strong desire or a want to do one particular thing but this need over here is more important and it's actually more pressing than the thing you want to do that requires discipline right that requires self-control and it also requires consistency because if you want to develop the habit or the skill of becoming someone who can effectively manage their time you have to do it over and over and over and over again now yes of course you can get to the point where it becomes a habit you don't even have to think about it the next thing you know you're taking care of all your needs before you take care of your wants because that's just how you've trained yourself to become and, and it is possible to do that but that initial push like you know not hitting the snooze button you know it requires discipline right it requires you to kind of push yourself out of your your comfort zone people don't change because they're so comfortable all the time um, and but but in order for them to achieve the things they want they have to do certain things different they still do the same things they're gonna be stuck in the same place five years later so that tells us that a different pattern of behavior has to be practiced. So let's look over to page 63 here, because that's the first page we're going to look at, because that is our introduction <clears throat> on page 63. All right, chapter four, responsible people use time wisely. Uh, again, chapter four, tick tock, tick tock, time management, and the introduction here it says, this is a scenario here that's painted in the, in the uh, mind of the student <coughs> that many of them, probably many of us, could uh, you know, easily re relate to uh, at some point of time in our lives. Uh, they might actually relate to it that very morning uh, or that very day in your class. It says the alarm clock goes off, but you're too tired to get up because you stayed up last. You stayed up past your bedtime the night before. You hit the snooze button but you never hear the alarm come back on. Half an hour later, you wake up to the sound of your mother asking, why aren't you up yet? You literally bounce out of bed and jump in the shower. You barely get wet before you jump back out, throw on some clothes and run outside just in time to catch the bus. You sit down with a sigh of relief, but soon your relief turns to major stress as you realize you forgot the report on your desk at home that was due today. And Mrs. Henry, your English teacher, informed the class that any late reports would automatically have 10 points taken off. Now, you know, put yourself in that person's shoes, you know, and you probably can think about the, the, the minute that they sat down in that seat, you know, that their heart started pounding when they realized they left a very important report at home. OK, and so you kind of want to when you get the opportunity for these scenarios, you know, you kind of want to make it come a little bit alive in the mind of the student. You know, and I say that because uh, as teachers, we we have a lot of influence on how we affect the learning of 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 our students. You know, one of the things that you find not only with young people, all people in general, but but um, especially young people what they remember most about you now it could be certain things you taught them certain facts you presented to them but one of the things that sticks out for a very very long time is how you made them feel whether it was excited whether it was energized whether it was motivated whether it was angry or sad or depressed it could go both ways positive or negative right so as teachers we do want to kind of, you know, build a little bit of excitement in, in the minds of our students um, for the lessons that are being presented. We can do it without necessarily saying, I'm going to get you excited for this lesson. No, you could just do it through your style of teaching, right? And it does sometimes require us to, to break out of the little box in our little comfort zone as well, because, you know, what might work for us might work differently for somebody else. Remember, we're dealing with different personalities, different characters, different upbringings, and so forth. So, you know, if I was going to be teaching this, 
you know, I would definitely take the time to kind of rehearse it and kind of make it alive. You know, don't get in there and go, the alarm clock goes off, but you're too tired to get up because you stayed up past your bedtime the night before. You hit the snooze button, but you never heard the alarm come back on. By the time you look up, you're probably going to see the tops of everybody's heads because they're going to be sleeping on their desk, <laughs> right? So make it come alive, you know, make it exciting. Don't be afraid to embarrass yourself a little bit in, in trying to get your, your students' attention. I'm telling you, there's no better feeling than to see when the, your students are really engaged and enjoying the class. I'm telling you, that is a really, really great positive feeling. It, it drives you to want to do more and, and help them to learn more. All right, so let's look at paragraph number two. Has anything like this ever occurred to you? Do you run out of time trying to accomplish everything you have to do? At the end of the day, do you say to yourself, I should have put more time in the studying for that test tomorrow instead of watching TV? The ability to effectively manage your duties, chores, activities, and leisure time is called time management. Now you see there, Usually before or after the definition, you'll have these words italicized, and then you'll have the, the main topic in bold print there, okay? So rehearse that with your students. You know, you go over it again, the ability to effectively manage your duties, chores, activities, and notice here, leisure time, right? You can mismanage your leisure time and take more than is allotted, right? Now, you don't have time for doing the other things that you really need to do. But all of these things, the combination of these things is called time management. Now, time management plays a very important role in being responsible. In this chapter, <clears throat> you will learn about the importance of managing your time effectively and explore ways that this can be done. Now remember, keep in mind when you think about that word effectively to avoid loss and waste because it ties in and fits perfectly with this, uh, this lesson. Okay, so now we get over here to page 64 and this is the self-evaluation that we were seeing and what we were talking about in procedure two that we'll be going over here uh, this evening with your students. And this is an opportunity for them to, like it said, evaluate themselves. Right? It's not to put them out there and to embarrass them or anything like that. It's to get them to see where they stand, you know, give them a, a kind of like a baseline in regards to time management. And it says here at the very top of the page, time management, self-evaluation. Do you use time wisely? Are you responsible with your time? Take the following self-evaluation to find out how you manage your time. And again, I would encourage your students, you know, when you're going over this self-evaluation to reiterate to them, be honest, right? Be honest. Don't be just waiting to see what everybody else, you know, puts down or says and then you put the same at. No, be honest. Think, tell them to think about themselves. Now's the opportunity for them to think about themselves, okay? And, and, and really answer honestly because that's the only way they're going to really see where they are and where they need to make improvements, right? If they take it seriously and say, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of lacking in that or I'm kind of, you know, I need to work on that, then that gives them the opportunity to work on those things. But if they check all the right answers, then they're going to think they're perfect, there's nothing to improve, and they're going to go through life with many, many struggles because the standard in their mind is different than society's standards when it comes to what we're talking about here and the peaceful solution standards in regards to time management. <clears throat> All right, so the instruction here at the very top is circle the one answer that fits your time management style. All right, so we have here um, number one. You have a class project due in two weeks. <coughs> you, A, start right away and spend all of your free time working on it. B, put it off until the night before and try to cram two weeks worth of work into one night. Kind of like when you used to put off those book reports that the teacher gave you, you know, you had to, uh, got to be careful what you say nowadays to, um, to uh, well, there's different books, Moby Dick and 
dealing with mockingbirds and you know uh what's that um what's that other guy's name i can't remember it was one of the standard ones that they used to uh i can't remember but anyway um like i said i didn't like english class was not one of my most liked classes i'll just say that much right i i under in my mind i know how to speak english what do i need to take a class for right <laughs> but it dealt more with you know words and and we also went over reading and comprehension as well uh things like that but i could not stand doing book reports i don't think that when i was in school i ever fully committed to a book report you know uh and like i mentioned in the previous classes you know there were these things called cliff notes that you can get from the library and it gave you a summary of the book and uh i thought that i could maybe get some of those because i couldn't afford them but i could get them from the library for free or I could just kind of read the quick synopsis uh, on the back of the book to get an idea of what the book was about. I did not like, I did not like doing book reports when I was growing up, especially in junior high, which when I remember us doing them. So I would cram the night before. This would have been me right here. I'd have been letter B, cramming the night before to to get two weeks worth of work into one night. Or C, set aside one hour every day to work. Um, on your project until it is completed all right so so you've got you've got a start right away and spend all your free time working on it B put it off until the night before and try to cram two weeks worth of uh, work into one night or C set aside one hour every day to work on your pro until your project is completed all right so you'll just keep those things in mind you know they'll circle them and they'll have their papers there in front of them uh, number two your mom left you with a chore list a mile long. To children, it's always a mile long, right? If it's, if it's 10 minutes, that's equivalent to forever, right? This is taking forever. How long do I have to stand here? You know, I, I couldn't imagine them. I think some of the young people, we need to take them back to like 20 years ago when we had dial up 28.8 or whatever kilobytes per second. You guys remember those old modem sounds, you know, <laughs> you know, and if somebody picked up the phone or a phone call came in, it kicked you off the Internet, you know, uh, imagine having to wait for something to download. Um, you know, it was nothing for just a picture or a small little clip to take 30 or 40 minutes to download. Right. Well, you know, society has made everything so, so fast paced and instant then nobody's willing to wait anymore for anything. You know, everything's fast, fast food, fast, fast this, fast cars, fast people. Um, and so to them, it's a chore list a mile long, when in actuality, it's probably like five things that their parents left them to do. So you could A, give up and watch TV instead. It's just too long. There's no way I'll get this done, so I might as well not even start. That's sometimes the justification in people's mind. There's no way you can complete it anyway. B, ask her which ones, <laughs> which ones you could ignore, which no parent appreciates. <laughs> you know, which ones can I ignore, Mom? Which one can I ignore, Dad? You know, I'll just do the ones I really like. You've got one on here for eating. Let's see. Um, or C, read the list carefully, then pace yourself and do one chore at a time. All right. So number three here, <clears throat> when it comes to your belongings, they are usually A, on the floor in your room, B, all over the house, C, neatly and orderly, and in their appropriate places. You know, that's something I always, I always tell, you know, my young people when they come home, you know, in the times when they're, are wearing coats in the winter time you know you know come in don't throw your coat on the freezer don't put it on the counter don't put it on the table don't throw it on the sofa don't throw it on the floor take it and put it in your room and hang it up so it'll be ready the next day you know I say the same thing with clothes when I when I was going to school we came home um, for us mom purchased us clothes for going to school and they were kind of like clothes that we would normally wear but they didn't have the holes and the tears and the you know stains on them and so forth so the rule in my family when we got home was we changed out of our our school clothes right 
Uh, and if we needed to, we washed them or we put them in the appropriate place, fold them up, put them in the appropriate place. There's nothing like needing to get a dress shirt out of the closet and your, your child brings their dress shirt out and it looks like it's crepe paper, you know, some type of uh, tissue paper because their idea of folding it was and putting it in the drawer. Well, when you put things away and you take care of them and you put them away neatly, believe it or not, things tend to last longer. They do. They really do. Of course, I know a lot of things are being made a lot cheaper than they were, you know, 30 years ago. But with that being said, we have to be even more careful with our belongings because they're not made with the same quality that they used to be. Okay, so they've got three options there on the floor all over the house or neatly and orderly in their appropriate places. Okay, number four, you usually do your homework assignments a, the next morning during homeroom. Ooh. B, on the bus going to school. This is where all the sloppy writing comes in because of all the bumps. Or C, at the same time every evening before going to bed. All right. Now, as teachers, I'm sure you see a pattern here as to which answers are right, but we'll keep moving forward here. Number five, to wake up in the morning, you, A, Wait for your mother to call you. Hmm. B, hope the neighbor's dog will bark loud enough for you to hear. Or C, set your alarm clock. And it's beneficial when you set your alarm clock that you actually plan to get up with the alarm clock. You know, there's nothing like hearing an alarm clock going off for 30 or 45 minutes three rooms down the hall right why am I waking up to that person's alarm clock <laughs> it's like if you set an alarm clock get up with the alarm clock and you know this is something that that I tell I tell a lot of the the, the young people that we talk to um, I tell them that you know you can actually train your body train your mind to get up without an alarm clock you know uh, you know my my uh, my uh, mother she had been uh, working at a place for like, uh, you know, 20 something years and she might have set an alarm clock. You know, some days you're a little more tired than others, but she could get up like clockwork, 530 every morning, 530 every morning. Didn't need an alarm clock. Just get up. Right. Might have been earlier than that. But um, but I even know personally, if I go to bed and I determine, you know what, I'm going to I want to wake up, you know, at this time in the morning. I can wake up in that, that time in the morning, sometimes like one minute before my alarm clock goes off and I'm getting up and turning the alarm. I'm waking up the alarm clock, right? <laughs> you know, you can. And, and, and if a person just determines, like a lot of times people get in this lazy, you know, I just want to sleep. I just want to sleep, 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 sleep. And you kind of see that with the hormone changes and so forth uh, with a lot of adolescents. But, um, but this is something that they can actually do. And I would, as a teacher, I would encourage you, you know, to challenge your students. You know, I, when you go home, set in your mind that you're going to get up at this particular time in the morning, right? And just see how, how many of them it works for. All right. So that's the three options there. Wait for your mother to call you. Hope your neighbor's dog will bark loud enough to hear or set your alarm clock. All right. Number six here. When you set appointments to meet your friends, you a... Keep them waiting at least 10 minutes. Now, in some countries, that's considered cordial, right? To be 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes late, it's kind of a, it, it, it is, it's a cultural thing. You know, even when we were in those areas, I know we were down in Argentina once, um, uh, the, the person that we were with to meet with a group of people told us that yeah, you know, it's normal for people to be 20 or 30 minutes late. That's just, it's, it's a socially accepted um, a thing, right? Um, and so you just expect to, you know, wait around and, you know, maybe eat, eat a little bit of something, drink a little coffee or have some water or something until everyone shows up. So you keep them waiting at least 10 minutes. And it's not just Argentina. It's, <laughs> it's other places. I don't want to make it seem like I'm picking on Argentina or anything. Um, B, remind them that you usually run behind schedule so they could be late too. So give them an excuse. Give them an excuse to be irresponsible. Or C, get there right on time. All right. 
Even if you're the one waiting for everybody else, remember, you can establish a habit and a pattern of being responsible, being uh, effective with your time, showing up when you say you're, now I understand there's sometimes there's going to be circumstances that are outside of your control, right? You get a flat tire on your bike, uh, there's, there's a major you know, traffic backup and you're on the bus, right? There's, there's certain things that are just completely out of your control, but as much as it is within a person's power to do so, um, they should you know, make sure that they plan their route, plan their time. I know when I have to travel somewhere, uh, even, even close within Abilene, but if it's someplace that's far away, and I know I have to be start, I have to start you know, work at a certain time and it's you know, two hours away, well, I plan to give myself a little bit of time. I might give myself an extra half an hour or 45 minutes to, you know, um, give a contingency for traffic. You just never know. There's always construction going on somewhere or possibly a, a detour or accident or something like that. So you know, it's no, no, no problem with having a little extra time if you can work it into your, your travels. All right, so get there on time. Number seven. Do you write down assignments and bring home the right books to do your homework? A, no way. There's no point in writing things down. I have a great memory. I just forgot to clean my room. But other than that, I have a great memory. <laughs> right? Uh, they say, uh, people say I've got a, a mind like a, like, a, like a safe, you know. Now, nothing gets in or nothing gets out. <laughs> but, but I've got a mind like a safe. Um, Got to have the right combo, I guess. They forgot the combination. <laughs> B, no way. Why bring books home? I do my homework the next morning during homeroom. And if you keep having that mentality, you might be doing your homework in detention. C, I sure do. I might forget something really important, and making time to study has helped my grades. And that that's important even when you get later on in life and you're talking to someone so you're talking to somebody on the phone um, somebody that you you could be a, a customer or somebody you're gonna meet or something it's a great idea to just have a little you know pad and a pencil or a pen and just jot down you know the, the main points uh, such and such street 2:30 in the afternoon Tuesday right uh, so you can remember and I'm telling you it, it it makes a big difference when you write things down because you're hearing it you're thinking about it, and then you're physically writing it down. You got a, a three a three power a three fold power pack right there um, in helping you to remember and to recall information. The more you can get the five senses involved, the better you are at you'll be able to retain that information. So let's see here. So you've got those three options there for number seven. We finished all those, and number eight. You have, when you have free time, you A, spend it on daydreaming about all the fun things you can do. B, spend it calling friends or texting friends or FaceTiming friends, right? Snapchatting friends, whatever. I'm sure there's others. I don't remember. I don't know them all. You know, um, that applies to this day and age um, besides for just being on the phone to see who's home. Or C, make plans the day before so you can make the most of every minute that you have. You know, I was listening to somebody who was talking about uh, some business things, and they were saying, if you get up in the morning and you say, well, what am I going to do today? You've already, you're already like 10 steps behind the next guy who said the night before, this is what I'm going to do tomorrow, right? Because you want to plan your day. There's an old saying. Um, um, no, I feel like uh, I'm having a bush moment here. Uh, fool me once. No, I'm not going to go there. Uh, if you, uh, oh, if you fail to plan, plan to fail, right? If you, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Because if you don't get things lined up and get things, you know, situated in the right and organized manner, then you're going to probably stumble, right? And, and that's not to, to, to throw a monkey wrench at you or anything, but you're more likely to when you don't have, you know, an organized plan laid out, even in your day. 
you can you can seem very busy throughout the day and some people they'll be doing it. they'll be they'll they'll look very busy but at the end of the day they really didn't accomplish anything they were just really busy well, what were you doing well i moved this tool from here and i did this over here and i stepped over here and i went over here and i had to go see what john was doing over here and then i did this do that, that well did you get that project done ah oh, no nah, you know what I'll, I'll get it done tomorrow man you know that's what i'm supposed to do <laughs> Well, you should have wrote it down, right? And then plan on prioritizing and getting the things that you needed to get done first uh, in order of priority, and then you'll have time to get your wants done. All right. Um, so, or make plans the day before so you can make the most of every minute that you have. And that's, of course, an effective way to spend your day. And lastly, number nine, you go to bed, A, when there is nothing left to watch on TV. Now, that doesn't apply to today's day and age. TV's going all the time today. I mean, you know, there's something on the television all the time now. Back in the day, at about, I don't know, 11, 12 o'clock, the static and the bars came on, you know, national anthem played, and that was pretty much it. <laughs> Unless you had one of them 10-foot satellite dishes in your backyard that you can get 8,000 channels, you know, probably half of the languages you couldn't even understand, you know. But uh, you, we had basically like three channels uh, up in Ohio. It was three, five, and eight. And then later on, some others started coming in. That was not really that long ago. I mean, it really wasn't, you know. And then when cable came out, there was 10 channels, 10 cable channels. Wow, right, uh, that, that you could get. You'd have to pay premium prices for them now, you know. And, uh, uh, and then you can watch TV all night long. Oldies. You know, war movies, westerns, you can just just waste your time letting your mind rot away, right? And you know the thing about it? Is people actually pay for that. They pay to let their mind rot. Wow. <laughs> well, anyway. B, when you're so tired, you can barely crawl into bed. Or C, you go to bed early enough to get six to eight hours of sleep because at your age, at any age, you need sufficient sleep to function properly or effectively. And that, that is very, very, very important um, because the hormone cortisol, you know, um, it's, it's, a, it's a activated by stress in your adrenal glands and so forth. Um, uh, if that builds up in your body, builds up in your system, and your body's always in this, this stressful state, you know, you can have moments when you, when you just crash, right? I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where, you know, you were really, the adrenaline was really pumping. You know, maybe uh, you, you were startled or there was, a, there was an activity taking place, an emergency, and you, you know, you were giving it all you got. And then when you got opportunity to, to sit back and calm down and relax, it just felt like all your energy was just completely completely drained out of you. You know, you, you have this, they call it adrenaline crash. Well, you know, when young people are continually, um, and it's not just young people, uh, anybody, uh, are, are not getting the proper amount of sleep, um, their body's not able to repair itself. The brain is not able to repair itself. You know, one of the things that doctors will do when there's a traumatic brain injury, they will actually put a person in a medically induced coma. They'll put them in a medically induced coma, kind of on life support and so forth, to give the brain an opportunity to relax so it can heal itself, right? Uh, and sometimes the body will force itself into that. So your brain does need, your mind, your body does too. You know, science knows that the body does a great majority of its repairs when you're sleeping. So if you don't get the proper amount of rest, you're not going to have the mental faculties to pay attention in school the next day, to get your peaceful solution lessons. Even when people don't get enough uh, sleep or the proper amounts of sleep, now you can actually get too much, right? I think, you've, uh, I think we've all hit the snooze button and then by the time, or maybe not hit the snooze button or just, you know, the alarm clock ended up halfway across the room in an attempt to hit the snooze button a little too hard with the hammer that was sitting on our nightstand. Um, and then you wake up the second time even more tired than when you were awakened the first time by your alarm clock. 
you know, I was interesting because I was listening to one of the um, sleep study, um, yeah, sleep studies. They were saying that what occurs with the body is we have a circadian rhythm, circadian rhythm, and of course the sunlight and you know dark and everything that kind of affects that. But your body kind of has, your brain kind of has these hours of sleep. Uh, and they're in like blocks of three, right? Three hours or so forth. And when you wake up, you know, the sun comes out, the melatonins, you know, the birds are chirping, you know, that circadian clock is like, okay, it's time to get up. It's time to start with getting our day, you know, functioning and so forth. Let's get up right. And you go back to sleep, you actually start that sleep cycle over again. So when you wake up 20 or 30 minutes later, you're 30 minutes into the beginning of a sleep cycle. That's why you're so tired, right? Because you really got to, now that's not to say, oh no, if I go to sleep, I got to sleep at least three hours. You know, don't, don't, <laughs> don't let your students have that excuse, right? Just get up when it's time to get up. You know, and I think we all have found that, you know, if you get up early in the day and just start getting things done, man, you'll find by the time eight or nine o'clock comes around when everybody else is waking up, Man, you've already accomplished three things. You're so much. Wow, it's, it's only 930. <laughs> wow. Now everybody else's day is beginning and I'm already, you know, three jobs ahead. It's amazing, you know, feeling to get so much accomplished. But you do have to get the proper amount of sleep. Sleep deprivation is a real thing, um, especially when you've pushed yourself. You see that in a lot of college students. They, they'll get on these exams and they're, they're studying and they'll be studying for, you know, 30-something hours straight right and they're actually doing more harm to themselves because their bodies aren't getting the sleep that they need uh there you get hallucinations you know people can black out they can you know they can start uh, seeing things and hearing things and so forth so everybody needs the proper amount of sleep um to be able to function effectively all right so let's look at the very bottom here on page 65. so how did you do for all a and b answers give yourself two points for all C answers, give yourself five points. If you scored between 18 and 26 points, you need major help maintaining your time, managing your time, excuse me, managing your time. Scoring between 27 and 39 points means you need to focus on specific areas in order to improve your time management skills. Scoring a whopping 40 to 45 points means you are well on your way to being resp a responsible person because you manage your time effectively, all right? And, and again, this is not to, you know, make the, make the student feel bad or anything. It's, it's their self-evaluation. So again, notice it's not asking the student to share their results with everybody else, okay? It's not meant to make them feel bad. It's just to get them to see, all right, if they were honest with the self-evaluation, remember we said you have to be honest, they get to see areas that they need to make improvements on. And there's nothing wrong with improvement. That's what we're all striving to do is, is to make improvements in, in every aspect of our life because all these things tie into us developing a positive, a strong moral character. All right, so let's go back to uh, lesson plan four, page C. Let's see here. Yeah, lesson plan four, page C. It says... Um, and procedure three, explain that without evaluating what activities and obligations need to be accomplished on a daily basis, it's easy to leave important duties undone. Have students read the sections, time can be your friend or your enemy, and wants versus needs, found on pages 66 through 67 at home. Stress that the effective use of time involves prioritizing, planning, and scheduling. All right, prioritizing in, in, in um, order of importance. So we are prioritize. You can prioritize something from most important to least important, least important to most, biggest to least, you know, biggest to smallest task, uh, you know, time. When does it have to be done? You know, is it something that needs to be done sooner than later? So there's different things you can look at with prioritizing. Then you've got a plan, right? You've got to, you've got to uh, work your plan. You've got to, once you plan, then you have to actually put some action into it, right? Just planning is like going in the car and opening up your map and say, I'm going to, nobody uses maps anymore. 
but we used to. <laughs> you know, that Rand McNally, that big thing that you couldn't use when you were driving down the road because you wouldn't be able to see the road. So you always had a navigator, a co a co pilot that you had in the vehicle with you. But you know, you sit in your car and then you say, I'm gonna I'm gonna drive here and you plan your route out with your highlighter and then you just sit there in the car with the, the engine idling. You haven't put forth any effort. So this is why once you do make a plan, then you have to put it into action here. So you've got planning, prioritizing, planning, and then scheduling in order to get all these, these, uh, these goals are accomplished. And of course it is. It's many goals throughout the day. You might not think of them. The students might not think of them. But it is, everything is little short-term goals that they're working to accomplish what particular purpose. Well, my purpose is to get an education, right? You know, or to be able to help other people, or to be able to improve my quality of living, or the quality, quality of living for other people. So in order to do that, I have to get educated, or I have to do this, or I have to do that. Whatever it is to help you to accomplish that purpose, you know, you've got to prioritize, schedule, organize, and focus, as we're going to see on page 66 here. So let's look on page 66 here, where it says, time can be your enemy or your friend. The passage of time is something that most people take for granted. We know that the sun always rises in the east and sets in the west. And I used to, I used to play with people and say, but in the wintertime, it rises in the south and sets in the north. That's why it's so cold, right? But I would tell them the truth of it. <laughs> I was just joking with them. But yeah, anywhere you are on the face of the earth, you know, it always rises, even all the way up at the very top, top part of the earth there, uh, where it sets on the horizon, it's still east, west, east, west, east, west, right? Um, I don't know how those people deal with that, with it being constant dusk, right, for so many months and evening, you know, for so many months. It seems like it would really throw your, your system off, but they, they deal with it. Many people try to squeeze in as many activities as they can into daytime hours. For those of you who have busy lives, it can seem... It can even seem as if time is your enemy because you often run out of time before you run out of things to do, all right? And, and one thing that I always remind people, I remind our students, I remind everybody, one thing that we all have in common, irregardless of who we are, where we live, our financial status, our educational status, our familial status, you know, whether we have a job, whether we don't, we all have one thing in common. It's we all have 24 hours in a day, you know? So we can use that time to effectively accomplish our goals or we can just let it go by. I know personally, you know, if I don't, if I have time off and I don't kind of plan out what I'm going to do and the end of the day comes and I look back and I think, man, I didn't do anything. I just feel like it was such a waste, you know? I feel really, really, really bad if I don't get anything. Thankfully, it's not a lot, you know, doesn't really occur that often, but, you know, um, I just, I feel empty, right? Because I could have used that time to get something accomplished. You know, if it wasn't for me, I could have accomplished something for someone else that, that, that you know, I could have helped out. So it's, it's important that we, we think about these things and planning things out ahead of time um, even if you live busy lives. And for the most part, you're going to run out of time before you get everything accomplished, right? Because there's always going to be something to do. But the point is, is to, what they call it, kind of compartmentalize these tasks or these projects. Make them, you know, put them into little boxes kind of in your mind and focus on, um, as we're going to see here for the next teacher, um, understanding your, your needs versus your wants and then prioritizing, right? That's going to be one of the one of the, the main things, first things that we talk about. Um, let me see here. I think what we're going to do is that we're going to we're going to stop right there at that first paragraph. So we're gonna we're gonna pick up on page 66 under time can be your enemy or your friend. This is uh, found in procedure two, and uh, and we'll pick up on the second paragraph there under. Did you ever have a day when you had so many things to do? And I think we've all had those days and it seemed like, how am I ever going to get it all accomplished? Well, you know, it actually is possible to do it if you can get things prioritized. Sometimes you have to split it up and get one thing done one day and one thing done another. But we're going to see how to get that accomplished 
and uh, we're going to go over some tips and things like that that can help us all to manage our time. Our next class will be um, this coming uh, Sunday, and that's going to be uh, uh, March 10th. It'll be uh, 10, not 10.30. <laughs> That'll be a late time, uh, 5.30 Central Standard Time, uh, PM, and that'll be our, David will be our next teacher. Uh, we hope to see you there. Thank you for all for coming, and have a wonderful day.